Hey guys, welcome to my crib. This is going to be a fun project and today I'm going to be taking you on a journey as I use Rhino to create a 3D model of my working area and my living room. This is a single space of course as I still haven't designed my own house but I'll make sure to create a video as well when that happens. In the meantime, I'll be showing you all the ins and outs of my design process and at the end I'll be creating an axonometric diagram to give you a unique perspective on how you can do the same. So sit back, relax and join me as I take you on this exciting adventure. I was inspired by Steven from Show It Better YouTube channel to create my own 3D model of my working space and living room using Rhino. I love the way he used his 3D model to plan out his space and make it more functional and I wanted to share some additional tips and tricks on how to achieve the same result as he did but using Rhino instead. Make sure to check out Steven's channel, the link is in the description. I created this interior setup because I wanted to divide my living room area from my work area and I needed a background for my recordings. Since I talk a lot with you guys over Zoom and I also record a lot, it's important for me to have a clean and professional looking background. I also wanted to find a way to hide all the wires and cables around my desk as I had a lot of these issues with my last apartment. It can be really distracting to see a bunch of cords and cables running all over the place and this base plan turned out to be the best solution, but I still need to work on organizing them and making the area much, much cleaner. One of the drawbacks of this space is that we don't have a lot of natural light. It gets dark pretty early and we have to turn on some additional interior lights. Another drawback is that the carpentry and some of the furniture are quite old and with very ugly colors. Despite these challenges, I'm excited to show you how I use Rhino to create a functional and stylish design of my space. I'll be taking you step by step through my design process and at the end, I'll be creating an axonometric diagram to give a unique perspective on my apartment. One of the first things I did was to set up the correct lighting in V-Ray. I used a dome light with an HDRI image to create a realistic and natural looking light source with soft shadows to ensure that my space looked bright and well lit, but not too harsh or overly bright. It's important to note that I turned on interactive V-Ray rendering at the beginning of my modeling process. Interactive rendering is a useful tool because it allows you to see your design as you're working on it, rather than waiting for a long rendering process to complete if you're using the bucket rendering method. This can be especially helpful when you're working on a complex or detailed design as it allows you to make adjustments and see the results right away. I had a couple of design options in mind, but this one turned out to be the best one because it clearly divided our working area with our living room area. I organized the 2D lines and used them to create the basic structure of the space. This included the walls, doors, floor, as well as the terrace door. I also used Rhino to create some of the furniture pieces in my design, but for some of the more complex or time-consuming elements, I used Chaos Cosmos to gather 3D models. The key to a nice image at the end is to have as many details as possible, but you need to be careful not to overdo it because it will increase the file size a lot. I made that mistake by importing a 3D model of my 3D printer and the file size suddenly jumped by 160 megabytes. Despite the increase in size, I decided to keep it in my design because it added a nice touch of realism at the end. I used Chaos Cosmos to import the correct materials for my design, including the parquet flooring, furniture color and other textures. I was able to modify the individual materials from the Chaos Cosmos model library by clicking on the merge button in V-Ray. This allowed me to customize the materials to my liking and for example I was able to change the color of the chair and sofa in the living room as well. In addition to using Chaos Cosmos, I also imported some models from SketchUp Warehouse. You know that I'm not a big fan of SketchUp, but you could find some interesting models there from time to time. However, these models needed to be cleaned up before I could bring them into my model. I spent some time removing the unnecessary elements and making sure that the models are as light as possible. This required a bit of trial and error, but it was worth it. The only thing that I couldn't find was a good PC tower and I really didn't want to model mine because it really had a lot of details. One of the highlights of my design is the circle decoration on the wall. This was a small side project that I did with my girlfriend and we used our 3D printer to make it a reality. You may notice that I couldn't possibly model everything in my space, but I tried to find the best possible replacement for the elements that I couldn't model, such as the monitors and my microphone arm. 
It's all about showing the process and giving as much life as possible to the space. At the end, I still think I could have added more details, but I had to stop at a certain point. Once the modeling process was complete, I took some time to carefully review all the colors, lighting and shadows in my design. I wanted to make sure that everything looked realistic and cohesive and that the materials and textures were properly applied. I experimented with different lighting settings to see how they would affect the overall look of the space. For example, I tried using different types of light sources, such as rectangular lights, to see how they would impact the shadows and highlights in my design. Next, I selected a couple of axonometric angles to give us a better idea of the space. One of the tricks that I used here was to hide the front walls so we could see behind them. This can be done by simply selecting the walls and hitting the hide button in Rhino. Another trick is to make the walls almost completely transparent by changing the material transparency in the various settings for that particular material. This allows us to see more of the interior of the space and get a better sense of the layout. After adjusting the production rendering settings and rendering both a clay and material version of the image, I moved on to Photoshop to make some final adjustments. I fixed any color grading issues and deleted any mistakes from the render. This step is important because it allows me to fine tune the image and make sure it looks as good as possible. By making these final adjustments in Photoshop, I was able to create a high quality image that accurately represents my space and showcases the design process. Here are the final images after completing the modeling, rendering and post-production process. You can see the space from a few different angles, giving a sense of the overall layout and design. You can see all the furniture, accessories and other details that are included in the design, as well as the materials and textures. I hope you enjoyed them and let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments. If you're interested to check out the complete 3-hour video of this modeling process in detail, you can see it on our Patreon page. When you join, you also get full access to all of our extended tutorials with project files, so you can follow along at your own pace. The link is in the description. If you're an architect and you're looking to quickly learn Run and Grasshopper, we have a completely free training on our website that's going to help you discover and learn the core principles of Rhino, the basic logic behind Grasshopper, and you'll find out what these tools are capable of in architecture. Go check it out, the link is in the description.